Now we want to talk about torque and how it relates to angular acceleration. And so the net torque on an object about a particular axis is equal to the moment of inertia that you calculate about that axis of rotation for that object times the angular acceleration. And, well, that's it. <laughs> of course, there's a lot that goes into that. Of course, we have to define an axis that was true when we looked at moments of inertia. To calculate a moment of inertia, that presumes that you've defined an axis about which that moment of inertia is defined, as well as calculating torques. You have to calculate torque about an axis, and that once you've defined that axis, then this relationship gives you the angular acceleration that is going to occur for a rotation about that axis. Okay, the other thing that um, this is for uh, rigid bodies, which means I have some sort of extended object and it doesn't undergo any sort of deformation. The, the elements of the object are fixed relative to each other, so it's not compressed or stretched or deformed in any way while the forces are acting on it. And the other thing, uh, again, like we have previously looked at in, in uh, uh, in previous videos, it is rotation in a plane. So this is not three-dimensional rotation, um, and so this it's uh, just of a of an object rotating in a plane. Okay, so let's th let's take it to a, to simple examples. Really, the only way to, to understand how this works. So again, I'm, I'm going to look at sort of a one-dimensional rod here. Um, it has, say, a length of uh, three meters. I'm going to act on one end of this rod with a force of, say, 200 newtons. And I'm going to act on it for a time of uh, five milliseconds. So I'm going to give it a millisecond. So I give it sort of a large force for a short time, milliseconds. Oh, I, I didn't give my mass before. I'm going to say it has a mass of uh, two kilograms, this rod does. Now let's say this rod is laying flat on a surface, and this surface is frictionless. So if I hit it on one end, I expect I'm going to cause this thing to rotate. So I want to calculate the, the torque that I do and then hopefully be able to predict the angular acceleration. What eventually I want to know is uh, um, what angular velocity uh, will the object have after the force acts. Okay, so I, I have a lot of information here. Um, what I don't have yet is uh, an axis. So about what axis do I want to calculate it? Well, that's going to be um, the axis that the thing rotates around, right? I'm, I'm going to give it, it's going to rotate. And so uh, where is that? That brings something I haven't mentioned explicitly yet is that um, an untethered object, so it's not being held, a point, it's not being held fixed. There isn't like a, a nail in, in one side that holds it to, uh, to one point fixed relative to the Earth. So an untethered object rotates about its center of mass. And that may seem uh, sort of logical. Uh, how do we know that's true? And the thing is, let's, let's just do Newton's laws on this. We know that Newton's laws say that the, the force net force on the object is equal to the mass of the object times the the acceleration of the point associated with the center of mass, okay? And so imagine for a moment, if this is the center of mass, that instead of rotating around that point, it rotated around this point. That means after 
uh, I hit it with this force, the center of mass would have some complicated, uh, um, some sort of complicated trajectory. It'd be moving to the right and also rotating about this point as this whole object moved off to the right. Well, it, it can't do that. That does not satisfy this vector relationship because the force, the net force is only acting here to the right. That means the center of mass uh, gets a acceleration to the right, which would lead to a change in velocity to the right. And so the center of mass has to move in a straight line. And of course, for this thing to rotate and move off it, for this object to rotate and for the center of mass point to only move in a line, that means the object is rotating about its center of mass. Okay, so now we have um, a, an object, we have a force, we're rotating this plane, and now we have um, an axis about which we want to calculate the torque. That's going to be the center of mass because we know that that is the axis about which the object is going to rotate since it, it's untethered on this frictionless surface. Okay, so um, since this is the axis, we can calculate the uh, radi the r vector, which points from the axis of rotation to the place where the force acts, which is at the the edge of the object. And so then, so that gives us let's do blue here torque is R cross F, remember, never F cross R. That would give you the negative torque, and torque, the uh, order of these vectors matter. It's R cross F. And uh, it looks like I've set it up so the vectors are perpendicular. That's convenient. And so this is the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F uh, times the unit vector, depending on our coordinate system. So, so we need a coordinate system here. Let's say our typical right-handed coordinate system, plus x, plus y, plus z, out of the screen. And so then, given this, uh, this coordinate system, if my index finger points along r, my middle finger points along f, then my um, r vector, my thumb, points out of the screen. Out of the screen is positive z, so that gives me a uh, negative k component. And so the it's three meters in length, and so the r vector, which is half the length, that's uniform rod, so the center of mass is in the center. Um, that radius, the radius, that length is then half the total length, which is 1.5 meters, times the force, which is said with 200 newtons, k hat is that's 300 um, newton meters in the k hat direction. So that is going to be my torque. Okay, so if I want to find um, how this thing rotates, what angular velocity this will have, well I need to find the angular acceleration of this object accelerated with, associated with that torque. So, the, since the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration, I need to find what the moment of inertia is. So this is the moment of inertia of a uniform rod about its center of mass, and that we have a table of those in the book, or any introductory book will have a table of standard moments of inertia, or you could calculate it, and you would find that the moment of inertia of a rod uh, about rotating about the center of mass is 1 12th times the, the mass, times the length of the rod squared. So let's go ahead and calculate that. That's 1 12, the mass we said was 2, and the length we said was uh, 3 meters, so that's squared. And so this is going to be equal to 3 halves. We have 1 3, calcu uh, one three here brings this to uh, 4 and then the other two gives me a two and three halves is left. So three halves kilograms meters squared for the moment of inertia. So now I can go ahead and calculate my angular acceleration, which is a vector, and it's equal to the torque, the net torque. We only have one force, and so the torque, the net torque is equal to the uh, torque due to the one force. It's, it's on a horizontal table, and so the force due to gravity is perpendicular to the normal force. There's no net force there. 
or net torque. All right, divided by the moment of inertia. And so this is uh, 200 uh, k hat divided by, um, well, 300, sorry, divided by 3 halves, which is then going to equal to 200 uh, k hat. So if we look at the, the units here, uh, the torque is newton meters, so that's kilograms meters per second squared times meters um, divided by kilograms meters squared for the <laughs> for the uh, moment of inertia. So I have the meter squared, meter squared, kilograms, kilograms, one over second squared, which is the right uh, uh, angular acceleration. Okay, so we have an angular acceleration that is, it gives a magnitude of 200 1 over second squared it, the the it's a represented as a vector the vector points perpendicular to the plane of rotation positive k which is also uh out of the out of the uh the screen or the board or the page or however you want to say it all right so let's go the magnitude of our angular acceleration is 200 1 over second squared so we 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 say it starts at rest and so our um, and constant and our our angular vo velocity is equal to its, its initial plus uh, alpha t, our angular acceleration times time, which is 200, and we said it was five milliseconds, so that's five, ten to the minus three, and so that's equal to one radians per second. Okay, and so I, in fact, I was going to explicitly mentioned this assumption early on and, and I didn't. We we made an implicit assumption when we did this. We said, okay, the force starts at t is equal to zero, the force starts and it, it acts perpendicular to this um, rod. But we didn't say what happened to that angle as it starts to rotate because it's going to start to rotate immediately. And so I'm making the assumption in this calculation that the force is always perpendicular to R. And so if my force is horizontal, um, that isn't true as the object rotates. But I'm going to make that approximation. And well, let's take a look at how good that approximation is. Because let's see what sort of angle, the, the force only acts for 5 milliseconds. So what sort of angle does this uh, rod make at the end of five milliseconds, and we can see sort of how good our approximation was that we said the force was always perpendicular. Well, if we say initially that the the uh, angle is equal to zero, um, it has some initial angle which is zero plus some initial angular velocity which we said was zero plus one half alpha t squared. So this was uh, one half our alpha was 200, but now t squared was 5 milliseconds, so that's 25, 10 to the minus 6. So this gives us 100 or um, uh, 2,500 times 10 to the minus 6, or 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 in radians, so 0 0.0025 radians is is the angle that the object made with respect to its uh, starting position at the end of five milliseconds. So I think we we did pretty well by approximating that this angle was zero over the time that the object acted. Okay, so here we have the example of force and, and this rotation. We, we didn't do the vector here. This is the magnitude of the rotation, but it is, uh, if we want to represent it as a vector, also in the positive k hat direction, uh, perpendicular to the plane of rotation.